Hello again, fellow RC enthusiasts. It's your host, Tom Cogswell, again from Horizon Hobby and Spectrum RC, here for another quick hit tech tip video from Spectrum. In this video, I'm going to be talking to you about this very screen here. I get lots of questions, and it's mostly more of a uh, what does the, these numbers mean here on the flight log screen? So what is the flight log screen, you might be asking? The flight log screen is a tool to help you evaluate the reception quality of your receivers. It uses these different numbers here to give you a better idea of the performance of the antennas and the receiver's quality of reception to, between your transmitter and your receiver. Now different receivers will have different numbers available to us. Like we see here, this is a single antenna AR620 receiver. So it's got that built-in PCB antenna, and that means that it's only going to report frame losses on one signal, on one antenna, essentially. So A is the main antenna, which is the only one, and then these other three are all dashed off. If you had a receiver like the AR8010T or anything really that has more than one antenna, diversity antenna, remote receivers, things like that, it would have more of these populated. So let's go over what we see on the screen here on our DX6E. So first off, I'm, like I'm showing you here, we're using a receiver that has one antenna. So that means, like I said, we only have one of these numbers populated here. What this number here, A, B, L, and R, they're all the same thing, is the fades on that particular antenna. Next up we have this F number here. And what that means, what that stands for, is frame losses, and then this next one is holds. We've also got DBM, which in my opinion is more useful if you switch it, and you can actually change this over to RSSI. A lot of the receivers nowadays are going to have this flight log menu built into it and they're going to be able to provide you with RSSI information. So let's go ahead and change that. Go down to telemetry. We're going to go to flight log. We're going to change DBM to percentage R or RSSI percentage. And then you can turn down the how low you want that percentage to go so it'll alarm you at, when it gets below a certain amount. I essentially just turn it all the way down to 40%. Once you get below 40% percentage R or percentage RSSI, it's going to alarm it at us. So let's do that. Make it a tone. There we go. So, so I just changed it to the range percentage. There are a couple of different options there. This one I find to be the most valuable one for us RC enthusiasts. Um, but that one essentially is the further you go out, the less that's going to be. Likewise, that's the range. And then this number here is your receiver voltage. So I've got a two cell battery plugged into our uh, receiver here. That's what's powering it through the six port and it is at 8.1 volts. Like I said, most of the receivers nowadays are going to be able to provide this to your air transmitter. If you have an older receiver, that is not telemetry integrated like these ones, you won't see this info. So things like an AR500, AR600, um, anything that uh, doesn't have like either a T at the end for telemetry or it doesn't have the newer smart technology stuff built into it like these ones. So let's discuss what the A, B, L, and R are to you. Essentially, so uh, like I said, these are fades numbers. This number here, A2, is the number of times that it had witnessed a packet had been lost. A little bit of information had been dropped out. I think a good analogy for this number, and really F as well, is losing frames in a movie or a video game. So you get a, you're playing a video game, it starts to get kind of choppy, the frame rate drops down. Instead of it being 60 frames per second, you're getting 50 frame frames per second. This is essentially the same thing. You're losing some frames of resolution or communication between the two remote receive or the, the receivers and your main transmitter. And then these numbers here, A, B, L, and R, are all the fades 
on the different receivers and antennas that you have available. So like I said, this one only has one antenna, so we only get one number. But let's pull up a receiver that has all four of these antennas. Alright, so now I have bound an AR8010T with three extra remote receivers and its main receiver all to my DX6E. And you'll see that all four of these numbers have been populated. A, B, L, and R. And if you look at the label on your receiver, normally there will be a where the ports go into or designating to those three ports that are plugged into the side for the remote receivers that we have. There will be a B, L, and R, and then A is the main receiver's antenna, so these guys here are A. And what you'll see here is we have four, four, and three here, but we don't have any Fs. So when we were looking at all four of the antennas on here, all four of our receivers are all communicating together. They're working together in tandem to bring the signal to your transmitter and back and forth so they communicate. If one of these loses communication or drops frames, the other one picks up the slack and so forth. So, if all, so that's why you want to have more than one remote receiver in like larger airplanes to be able to take up the slack when a particular receiver, let's say, is not performing quite well because it's blocked by a battery or it's far off in behind something or whatever. So that's the reason why you'd want to have separate remote receivers so that you have more of them that are working in tandem with each other to to produce a better connection between the receiver here, our whole receiver array, and our transmitter because they are all working together. If one drops a signal, the other one picks it up. But if you see F here, right? F is the frame losses. What that means is that if any of these four receivers drop a frame at the same exact time, simultaneously, that's when an F will appear. So if all four of these dropped a frame, then we, we, we would get one of those. Let's go ahead and try to simulate that. I'll put it into range test mode. And this is actually another helpful screen because in range test mode, if you're getting flight log data, it actually brings up like a little mini flight log menu there. So I'll press the button to turn the range down, or turn, you know, yeah, essentially turn power down. And you'll see these numbers are starting to go up because we're losing packets. It's really not too bad. I expect to see more, but it's not terrible. But we did get one F, so let's go back to the flight log menu. Right. So we're back in F, but the other ones all dropped some frames when I was in the range test mode. And at one point, A and these three others all dropped a frame and produced a frame loss. Now this is very minute. You're not even going to tell. You're not going to be able to feel it when that happens in flight. And then H. Let's talk about the bad guy. H stands for holds. That means that the, all the receivers had dropped communication for more than 45 consecutive Fs. So that's about a half second of no communication between the receiver and the receiver array, all the remote receivers, and your transmitter. If that happens, if you fly or you do a range test and you see one or more Hs, you need to evaluate what happened. You need to see if you have like a battery that's going bad, or a really loose connection, or you just have terrible placement on the receiver, things like that. One thing that can cause an H though, and this is the one thing that I run into all the time, is let's say if we turn off our transmitter while the receiver's still on. See all my lights go off there because the receiver's like, oh I lost communication. We're going to turn it back on. Go back to the flight log menu. And we have a hold. And that's because the receiver is what's reporting all this data. The radio is not reporting it, it's the receiver telling the radio its health, essentially, its receiver quality. And the H is one of those. So the only way to reset these numbers is to unplug the battery and plug it back in. No need to do that now, but if you're doing testing and you're trying to figure it out, make sure that you didn't have a scenario where communication between the, the receivers and your radio was caused by you. So let's discuss what these numbers are and what they mean to you. These numbers are really just for you to be able to compare and contrast between the receivers that you have installed into your model. If they're super high, that doesn't necessarily mean that something's wrong. One thing that I would use these numbers for, the is to evaluate if your receiver is in a good position. So let's say you have 
and like we're looking at here, you know, they're not drastically different, but let's say that uh, R was at 500 and the rest were around 100 during our five, uh, during our, our range test or during two, like a, a three minute flight. That would tell me that R, the antenna plugged into the R port, is in a bad location or it has like maybe a broken antenna or something along those lines. So you'll want to go ahead and what I would do is just reposition it or just make sure that it's in good shape. It's maybe the, make sure the light's not flickering, things like that. So simply just repositioning it and doing another range test or another flight and seeing if that made any difference is a good way to look at it. If you're getting a lot of Fs, and let's say, what is a lot of Fs? This is a good question that I get. Over 100 oh, during a 10 minute flight, I would say it is a lot of frame losses. If you're in, in, in the 10 minute flight, let, let's, okay, so 10 minute flights from the, off the ground, off the runway, in the air, and then back down. So, and the reason I mention that is because when your receivers are close to the ground and in a model that's been sitting on the runway, taxiing out for two minutes or so, these numbers are going to go up because there's a lot of reflection and things that are blocking it from getting good reception to your radio. Obviously, when things are in the sky, they're going to get better reception to your antenna on your radio. So, one thing that I always kind of think about if I'm doing some real, you know, some real comprehensive flight log testing is I'll look at my screen right before I take off and say, okay, yeah, these numbers are about there. When I took off, I'll take off and I'll land and I'll look at the numbers again and use that to better evaluate how my antennas are positioned and how everything is working properly. So these numbers, I, like I said, as they could be as high as a thousand during a, a 10 minute flight. They could be pretty high and I wouldn't worry about it, just use it as a way to tell where, if the receiver is positioned properly. This one, if it's under 100, you're golden. Even if it's, you know, a 10 minute flight and it's somewhere around 100, you know, maybe check out things, maybe sure, make sure you don't have one of these that's producing a lot of fades uh, or frame losses. And then lastly, like I said, if you have any H's, do a very thorough check of your receiver system and make sure that you have adequate power and everything's positioned properly. And most importantly, like one thing that I like to show people is, and we don't need a, our, our, our radio for this anymore. Let's say you got a big old pack right this, huh? A big six cell battery and your receiver's right next to it. That's a bad idea. The batteries are metallic in nature and they're going to soak up and block the reception between your radio and your receiver. So let's say we have our plane set up like right here. You know, we're flying along and our, our radio is right here. That's a complete blockage between the two. And you're going to get holds. You're going to get lots of fades. So it's always a good idea to make sure that your receiver is far enough away. I'd say a good six inches between batteries, fuel tanks, even other electronics if you can, servos and things like that, ignitions on gas engines. Don't put it right behind the back plate of your gas engine too. And that's another reason why you'd want to have something with remote receivers so that you can have receivers in several locations of your plane. And also another great function of the flight log menu and really anything telemetry wise is the ability to save a log of your flight to the SD card on your transmitter. I'll show you guys quickly just how to do that. And when you're using this function, the best way to review it is a couple of third party apps that you can get for your PC that uh, we don't necessarily sell or make, they're both, uh, one of them's free, um, but just look up telemetry log or spectrum telemetry logger and uh, you'll find one that you think will work best for you. Uh, personally, I like the TLM viewer. Uh, you guys can check that one out. It's free and easy to use. So essentially you just go to this menu, file settings in the telemetry menu. So I went down to telemetry and I went to file settings and I'll set it to start with a switch. So usually I'll put it on my, my, my eye switch and we'll go back. So and we'll go back to the flight log menu so you guys can see. Back. And once you have that selected, once you have it on the switch of your choice, like the switch I, if I hit I, you'll even see up here in the top right hand corner what looks like an SD, it's the SD card logo. And it'll have like a little moving bar below it, meaning that it's saving this log file and all telemetry data to the SD card as a .tlm file. So you'll need something that's gonna be able to read that and then you can graph it. So like I was saying, if you have, if you're sitting on the runway for a long period of time, these numbers are just gonna start building up. It's hard to really be able to 
use those numbers without knowing what they were before you took off. And you can use the log file to be like, okay, I took off at this point because it gives you time. And you can then calculate better how things are performing. Awesome. All right, RC enthusiasts. Hopefully this explanation of the flight log screen and some little tidbits about receiver placement will help you produce the most effective and efficient receiver placement and use of the flight log screen in the future. If you guys have any questions or you have other suggestions for Spectrum quick hit tech tips that see their surface or air, feel free to leave them in the comments below or message us directly on Facebook. This is Tom again signing off. We'll see you next time.